one thing that makes it real special is that we actually have an adaptable sock liner inside the shoe. So it really just gives a really specific fit. We're going to introduce you to Hio from Arterix, who's going to talk a little bit about Arterix. From Arterix? Michael's up! We're going to pass off to Mr. Glenn Redback. It's really too bad we, did, we don't have the, the projector, because I wanted to show a lot of little, like, just um, photos and just little highlights of different things, and just kind of talk about running here in New York and what it's like to run in New York. But I really don't want to talk that long. I really want to hear what kind of questions that you guys might have. Um, like I've, you know, like Michael was saying, uh, I've done a lot of things. I've been with the company 14 years. I've run pretty much in every country: Asia, Europe, um, America. I've done Western States six times. Um, you know, so a lot of different things. So it's really hard to just talk about one particular thing. It's more interesting for me to hear from you what 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 kind of questions that you may have. On the PowerPoint that I did have ready, I had a lot of different places and parks that I run in, in and around New York. Um, when I started running, I was sort of like a high school, college runner, and I did a lot of road runs. But as soon as I figured out trail running, that was my love. I sort of jumped to that ship, and I never really turned back. So I just moved up in distance from half marathons, trail marathons. Once I got into the 100 milers, that sort of became my specialty, which is a little bit nutty to become a 100 mile specialist. Um, I have done some runs that are longer than that, but then your body takes a toll. So um, I probably ran 100 ultras. I ran 10 ultras a year for 10 years. So you can figure out the math. Um, it's, it's really cool, William's here tonight. Two years ago, William and I finally did uh, Rim to Rim to Rim. So we went to Grand Canyon, and because it's mappy hour, I actually wanted to show you a map, because I, we mapped the run with our, with our Suntos, so that you can actually see a little one minute video of us going down to the canyon and up and then back and down. So again, it's, it's too bad we can't show that. But I really want to open it up to you guys and just sort of like answer any questions that you may have. Like, seriously, like anything. Like, you don't have a car and you want to go on a trail run, you want to get on a train, you want to take it to the AT up in Pauling, and then run all the way over to Bear Mountain and jump on a train and come back. Yeah, that's possible. That's about a 40 mile run. So there's other things you can do like that. So it's really about being creative in New York, and you, you don't need a car. You know, you just need to shoes on your feet and out the door. Questions? That's, that's the exact question. <laughs> <laughs> You don't need a car. Yeah, you absolutely don't. Um, and there's enough events around here that you can get to ultras that aren't that far. Uh, again, my friend Will over here, he did the South Mountain 100K four weeks ago. It was in Milburn, New Jersey. He took the train out. Took the train out, ran the 100K, took the train back. So, I mean, you, it's about being creative. These races, well, it's a little harder to get to Delaware Water Gap by train, but to get to Breakneck, you can, there you go, you can get there by bus. But Breakneck Ridge, you can totally get to Breakneck Ridge by train. You just take it up to Cold Spring. If you want to get to Bear Mountain, there's a Bear Mountain train that goes to Manitou. You can get off at Manitou and it's a two mile walk across the bridge, you're at the Bear Mountain Inn. So there's lots of different ways to get out, it's about being creative. What's your favorite, like, what's your go-to, like, mid-distance run in New York City? So I live up by Washington Heights, so I live right next to George Washington Bridge. I run across the bridge and I run up and down the Palisades. The Palisades is actually called the Long Path. The Long Path is a 347-mile trail that goes from George Washington all the way to Albany. So you just figure the math. If I want to do 20, I just run across the bridge, run out 10, run back, there's my 20. Um, it's just Again, Will and I once, we just ran from Bear Mountain all the way back to Fort Lee. Uh, Will, how long was that? Uh, that's uh, 64 miles. There you go. So, 
it's about being creative um, and knowing where you can get water. So if you're going to do one of these long runs that's point to point, you got to figure out where you're going to get your water source. So you got to know, and so on a, on a run like that from Bear Mountain, you're going to come through little towns. You're going to come through Nyack. So there's a McDonald's in Nyack. Um, if you're going to run down to Piermont, there's a little bakery in Piermont. So there's all these little stops along the way. There's a ranger station. Around 10 miles, there's this little ranger station. There's a restroom. There's a Coke machine. There's a water fountain. So it's all about knowing where you can get stuff because if you're on one of these big long runs, you don't want to have to be carrying three liters or four liters of water unless you can you can stash it the day before. Like we've done that where we've gone out and stashed water the night before. So it's it's all about being an ultra runner is not easy. There's got to be some creativity to it. But if you want it, if you want to do an event bad enough, you're in training for it. You'll figure out ways. A lot of times, like the train stations aren't always. Sure. So, um, well, the one great thing now is there's Uber, and Uber is all up in Westchester. They'll take you anywhere. So if you wanted to get to Bear Mountain and there was no trains going past Peekskill, you could go to Peekskill and take a Uber to Bear Mountain and get there. So there's different ways that you can do that. Um, always carry a credit card. <laughs> like, it comes in handy. Uh, in ultra running, it's okay to walk. Like, in a road race, you never walk. But in ultra running, walk. You come to a hill, walk, it's fine. You can walk, it's not a problem. So, I think taking care of yourself is, 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 a, is paramount. But you have to sacrifice things, you know? So, maybe you don't go for that promotion because you go to that yoga class or you, you, know, you go to physio. Um, I think you need a team around you as well. Like, I have a really good physical therapist. I have, a, I have an acupuncturist. Like I always have people around me that help you. And it's good to run with different people. So you have different groups that you run with. So you have a club in this city. You have a fun club. You have one person who'll go to Grand Canyon with you on the spur of a moment. You know, that kind of thing. So you, you, need, you need a team. But, I mean, a lot of people aspire to doing, like, one marathon. And that's great. I mean... She's going to do her first marathon this year. Like, that's awesome. You know, so it's great. You have a goal, work towards it. Doesn't mean you have to do another one. But it's like running gives back, you know. Um, and you just, if you're passionate about it, it'll come back to you. Questions? Yeah. What's a good non-running activity? Like exercise. What's a... So I hike. So I do a lot of hiking, and when I when I discovered like the, the Appalachian Trail, I do a lot of section hiking. So I've I've sectioned hiked a lot of different states: New York, New Jersey, Connecticut, Massachusetts. But I haven't done a lot of um, I haven't done long like, I haven't done day to day. And one of the slides I wanted to show you, um, like I, I know Scott Jerk just through different races, and so I became friends with his wife. Before, and so we contacted her when he was doing the big uh, Appalachian Trail. And so she was like, well, do you want to meet him in Pennsylvania? And I'm like, yeah, we can do that. So we went and spent a whole day with him, me and my friend Nathan, and we did, we did a 45 mile day with him. And you know what, it was really hard. It wasn't because we had to go his pace. And Scott likes to walk slow, but then when he's not walking, he likes to run fast. So his run is like nine, 10 minute pace. And so you're like, you're running nine minute pace with him. You're like, you're struggling at the back. But then he walks, and he walks slow, and you're like, oh. And so it was a, it was, it was a long 16-hour day. But, I mean, he was in a zone. He was, he was doing the whole Georgia to Maine. And if you haven't seen, his book just came out a few months ago. His book is called North. So I don't know if you know who this guy is. Anyway, so, um, yeah, I mean, it's just, your, your question was what other things that I do. Hiking is one. In the winter, I spin. I get on the bike. I mean, you got to do something to sweat, get the heart rate up. It's a good beer. <laughs> That's it. That's... And if you're wondering what 
running long distances due to you. Glenn's only 28 years old. So this is what you look like if you continue to run those long distances.